It's the rest of the SEC presented by Geico, and it seems to happen every single year that the Commodores knock off somebody they shouldn't. 17-6 at South Carolina at williams Bryce Stadium. It's the highest-ranked team that Vanderbilt has beaten in more than 70 years in the number six Gamecocks in the first time that Vanderbilt has beaten a Steve Spurrier coach football team. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Norris alongside Spencer Tillman and Tim Brando, both of CBS Sports. Uh, CBS Sports. We're here on CBSSports.com. And unbelievable how poorly South Carolina played on offense in this game. Look but ahead. look say, ahead. Can't say Vandy's Vandy. No, yeah, no, no. no. Uh, and never. They were guilty of the look ahead. Yeah. 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 You know, South Carolina. Got There's to take no care identity. Of there was no identity there today. How many South quarterbacks Carolina? Steve Spurrier changed? I think, many, I think Smelly and between the two quarterbacks, mm -hmm. there were five changes. Five changes, yes. yeah. Five changes. And turnovers, game. and they couldn't run the football. I mean, South Carolina is a team that likes to run the football. Mm -hmm. They had 26 yeah. yards yeah. rushing Old today. Old Bobby Johnson, a Columbia, South Carolina native, the coach at Vanderbilt, got to the SEC by way of Furman. Mm -hmm. This is by, I mean, this game meant a lot more to him. Yeah. To make no doubt. And this is one of those rare cases where Tyrone Nix's defense didn't really step up and say the day for him. I mean, they played admirably, but again, the offense was basically ineffective, totally mm -hmm. non-existent today. Yeah, and South Carolina I mean, they just did, did not play well in this football game in a 17-6 loss. Uh, of course, the biggest game of the day, Florida and, and Kentucky, and for that you can watch the uh, SEC highlight show between those two teams. You know, it's a rare occasion that the third Saturday in October is not one of the highest games on the national oh, radar. Yeah. Tennessee-Alabama. But wait a minute. That's usually uh, important uh, in television. Uh, yeah. Tennessee-Alabama today uh, was a 12:30 kick, and for mm -hmm. most of the country, they couldn't see this game. Yeah. I don't think the Volunteers want to go back and watch this game. 41-17, <laughs> and, and they gave up, uh, let's see, do some math here, 40, they gave up 27 consecutive points sure. without putting one on the board because Tennessee had a 17-14 lead. And John Parker Wilson was absolutely fantastic today. No question about that. Well, and the thing that amazed me, though, was all of the biorhythms for Tennessee coming in looked to be good. You know, Arian Foster was running the ball. Philip Fulmer's team had uh, clearly identified themselves mm -hmm. with that identity that he wants of a power running game, and the defense had played much better in the game in Starkville. For them to come in and lay an egg like this, yeah. I'm telling you, Philip Fulmer right back on the hot seat yeah. uh, from a couple of weeks ago. No question. The fans in Tennessee look at John Chavis's defense being carved up by an Alabama team mm -hmm. that has had problems finishing games, not just for Mike Shula, but for Nick Saban. But I've been into looking this at game. this Alabama team, guys. I mean, they've done something last week, albeit a controversial win over Ole Miss. They've done something they hadn't done in the last six years, and that's when, when they were trailing, headed into the fourth quarter. Yeah. So all of a sudden, this identity that for this last ball club. Week. That was last, last week. week. Yeah. Last week they did that. So I think I've been tracking them, and they're doing some things now that really lets me know they're turning the corner. They're winning ugly, winning late. Yeah. And that's something they need and to be able to do. But today was the best win all season. So oh, there's no right. question. Absolutely There's no question fantastic. about it. From the beginning of the game when they started with the, uh, didn't they start with the they onside kick? With an onside yeah. Kick. yeah, I mean, that kind of lets you know. Message, you know. Oh, by the way, wake up the echoes for Lou Holtz in the 1970 Orange Bowl. You know, you, you take five players selling their Fire textbooks, them. and you say, you're fired for this weekend, and then the other guys go out and make yeah. it happen. Yeah. But what happened today to Vanderbilt and to Tennessee just takes the bubble right out of the game next week between Tennessee and South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were anticipating that game having a strong influence on who would win the East. Now that game's sort of a whole hummer. Uh, and that was because both those teams heading into this week were two of the teams that controlled their own yeah. destiny to yeah. win the East, and now neither of them actually have it. On the basis of what happened, Florida and Kentucky, I mean, even in defeat, Kentucky looks a lot better than either Tennessee yeah. or South Carolina, and Florida has a chance to be the best two-loss team in America. And Alabama now sets itself up with that game against LSU. Of course, yep. the Nick Saban playing against his old school uh, mm -hmm. game, and George Alabama will have a bye. Hedge is going, oh, maybe <laughs> us. You know, we had the week off. Nothing bad happened to us. Yeah. So it's amazing what can happen just when you sit at home and lick your wounds for a week. And wow. Georgia did, and. They've got the uh, game formerly known as the cocktail party next week. Let's talk about one other game with the two teams that are both licking their wounds, and Arkansas comes out of this one a little mm, bit better. Yeah. Uh, they go into uh, into uh, Vaught-Hemingway Stadium and absolutely just destroy <laughs> Ole Miss. And uh, yeah, Let's take a look at Ole Miss's re uh, remaining schedule here because they're a 2-6 and six ball club, yeah. and they have four games left. On the schedule, it looks like there is one game remaining that they're going to win, and that's Northwestern State. You've got to assume they lose at Auburn. You would assume they lose to LSU. The way Mississippi State's playing, uh, forget the way they played today yeah, at West yeah. Virginia because that's out they of conference. They came back and scored but points they did. Late, But Mississippi State's been playing better than Ole Miss this season. This is a team that you're looking at a 3-9 and nine season. Is this it for Ed Orgeron? Well, you know, going into the game this week, it looked as though, and you don't say anything about moral victories, and I'm sure Ed Orgeron doesn't want any of them, but 
they had, as, as Spencer so eloquently put it, given the blueprint for success against Florida a few weeks back that Auburn utilized for a victory, that LSU was able to come co uh, collaborate with and mm -hmm. turn into a victory. They played well in those games that they lost. Today, yeah. they really lay an egg, and they lay an egg before the egg bowl. I mean, and so Orgeron is... He's in trouble. Well, I mean, he's, 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 he's got trouble. support of Mr. Kayak. So, yeah, I mean, does. obviously that helps a great deal. When, when that's part of your legacy, you made that hire. Yeah. He'll get every, um, every, every extended opportunity but, to but make it. But to answer your question, he's in trouble. Yeah, he, he sure just is. needs to. His team needs to compete at a higher plane than they did today. Yeah. And I think you're probably right. Yeah. When the president yes. hired you, then that helps. It'll be very difficult, though, with the way that the rest of the schedule will oh, uh, yeah. be called for something. And, and as for anything. Houston Nutt, uh, he's like, uh, this is what you take away from the situation for him. This has got to be the best team that was winless in any conference mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. Felix Jones running the way he does in McFadden. But for those fans, it's a zero-sum proposition. I mean, if the folks that know yeah. the game certainly know that was a quality yeah. win, big time. Absolutely. But, but they're looking at wins and losses, and, and, and to be quite honest, before this point, they hadn't won a conference game. But so, at you know. least at this point, they have a winning record, and that yeah. is 4-3. Right. and three. Let's get to our stock up, stock down around the rest of the country for the uh, early part of the day. And, of course, we're taping this while Auburn and LSU mm -hmm. is going on. But uh, stock up, uh, let's just set up Penn State and Ohio State next week. And uh, I know the Buckeyes had a 24 nothing lead and let it slip away. But that defense is fantastic, giving up just three points to mm -hmm. Michigan State, at least three points to Michigan State's offense. But the one part about this stock up that I think is very important, UCLA, <laughs> they go into Utah and lose 44-6. to six. That about four weeks ago. And right now they are yeah. in uh, on top of the Pac-10 at 4-0 in conference after yeah. beating Cal today. For, for today, they're the best team uh, with the, with the, in the worst portfolio. Let's put yeah. it that way. <laughs> the best stock in the worst portfolio right now, well, that would be the Pac-10. Well, the combination of what Oregon State, did to Cal, or Cal did to itself with Riley, the freshman, in for Nate Longshore. And what happened to them today? Boy, Cal has really not only made it bad on themselves, but even worse on their Pac-10 brethren. Mm -hmm. I mean, this hurts Oregon. It hurts SC. Yes, it uh, they really need Arizona State now to prop up the league. Now, they didn't play today, mm -hmm. but I, they need Arizona State to continue winning for them to be a, a conference that has a, a BCS and, prayer. And, yeah. and this loss really takes something away from that Arizona State-Cal yeah. game, which which is set up for next week. Let's, let's take a look at the stock down real quickly here. And, uh, well, how about the Minnesota losing to North Dakota State? <laughs> and uh, Bison guy. Yeah, of course, Bruce South Carolina on there. Cincinnati on has lost two straight in Nebraska. This is a, an wow. obvious one here with the fact that, uh, you know, Tom Osborne back in, in Lincoln, Bill Callahan, uh, his team got hammered at home Tim, again. Tim coined it the, the buyout bowl. It was the I buyout bowl today between <laughs> Franchoni. You know, potentially the buyout bowl, no question yeah. about that. Texas A&M's Dennis Franchoni still has to beat Oklahoma and Texas, yeah. in my opinion. If he doesn't so, win the South, he's, he's got He's got to win it yeah. in order to survive. And Callahan, he's backpedaling now off what presumably or reportedly he might have said it's going to be in a book released in November about a crotchety old you-fill-in-the-blank uh, Tom Osborne. Uh, tough sledding for Callahan. Yeah. He does have that golden parachute. Yeah. Just go great. Just sign the new contract. Take the three yeah. million and see it. Well, uh, that that is an important thing to consider. But I, I think this this Nebraska ball club is in a very difficult spot right now in their history, guys. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the players that they used to have. Right. And there's a number of teams that we could talk about. Florida State among them, Miami, uh, other teams that are struggling oh, because they, they don't have that. the talent. <laughs> yeah, they did. We oh, had, and by and the and way. Believe it or not, by the way, that game was actually better than, yeah. most, than a lot of the other games around the country. <laughs> For more on that one or anything else in the SEC or everything else here in this week in college football, be sure to check uh, everything on CBSports.com. And, of course, Spencer will be writing articles this week goes on. We'll preview things and we'll see Timmy again next week. We heard his feelings. <laughs> yeah, last day, the other one. Folks, for these two gentlemen, I'm Jason Horowitz. Enjoy the rest of the week. Take care.